Welcome back this morning. Easter is a day of hope, and the world, you could say right now, could really use some of that. The Archbishop of Hartford, Leonard Blair, is here in studio joining us on this Easter morning. Happy Easter, and thank you, Archbishop, for being here with us today. Thank you. Happy Easter to you and to all of our viewers. Let me ask you first, why is this, in, this holiday uh, perhaps the most important, really, the holiest of the year? Well, from a Christian perspective, uh, I think we can say that uh, Christ's resurrection from the dead at Easter is really the pivotal, pivotal point of creation that, uh, you know, God created the human person in his image and likeness. And we know the story from the Bible of how sin brought death into the world. And really, uh, our belief is that Jesus, by his resurrection, is the conqueror of sin and death. It's kind of a... Um a renewal in many ways, right? Like it's uh, okay, we can start over, Easter is here, and now we can move forward in a, perhaps a new, refreshed way? Yes. Well, you know, it's biblical to talk, especially in the New Testament, about dying and rising, that life is always a, a series uh, uh, of dying and rising. Uh, all of us are weak and human, and uh, we have the slings and arrows of, of life. Uh, but uh, we're always dying and rising again, with not through our own power alone, but by the grace of God. We talk about hope, right? That is tough these days. I look at what happened in Baltimore last week. Look at what's still going on in Ukraine. Um, the, the tension really around the world, uh, entering another election season, which is very hard for people to, to watch and mm -hmm. take in. Uh, what do you tell people when it comes to being hopeful and, and, and how to maybe get through some of this and try and explain some of this? I know that is not an easy thing <laughs> to explain, but I guess maybe what, what would your advice be to people? Well, let me frame it this way, that um, you know, there's something very mysterious but significant about the fact that the scriptures tell us the risen Christ still bore the marks of the wounds in his body. And um, I think we can say, you know, as Catholics, we, or even Christians, we talk about being members of the body of Christ, that in us, Christ continues to die and rise. And in the midst of this great battle against evil, sin, and death, that he conquered, that conquest continues through history in us if we live by faith, hope, and love. And so when people encounter all of these things, uh, at least for us, you know, as uh, Christians, uh, we are united to Christ. You know, Jesus said, unless you take up your cross every day and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. So his, his victory over sin and death doesn't put an end to the world's sufferings, but it gives an unconquerable hope that these things have already been uh, vanquished. We have to hold on tight and one day in eternity we will see the result. So it's always a dying and rising with Christ. The two are inseparable. And so for giving people hope, I think we, my most basic uh, message is that you have to believe in God. You have to trust in God. You have to uh, put into, into uh, practice the great commandment uh, to love God above all things and your neighbor is yourself. You know, there's God, your neighbor, and yourself. You have to love yourself. There's a good way of loving yourself uh, that, uh, that's, that's just our pilgrimage in life. And helping others in the yes, process. Yes, love your, other, your, your neighbor as yourself. So I think, uh, you know, we're always bringing the consolation of Christ to, to other people. Uh, by, uh, I, you know, Pope Francis has talked about the modern world having material, uh, spiritual, and moral destitution, all three, uh, material, uh, moral, and, and spiritual. And, you know, I think our mission is to address all of those things. Sometimes today in the world people think of addressing material destitution, um, but what about the moral uh, destitution that is the root of so much suffering. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the great problems in the world are, and the suffering of the world is caused by people not, not having a moral sense uh, uh, that's rooted in faith. This Easter is a little different for you, right? You announced your retirement last summer, if I remember correctly. There's going to be some changes locally. H how, how are you? What is next for you? Well, I'm very comfortable in making that decision because it would automatically happen when you turn 75 in church law. 
But for a number of reasons, uh, I did uh, ask that a coadjutor, one of those Catholic fancy words, <laughs> coadjutor, coadjutor bishop be appointed. And Pope Francis said yes, and so Archbishop Quine has been with us. And I think it's a wonderful way to do it because he's been able to uh, familiarize himself with the archdiocese slowly. Uh, we get along very well. Uh, it's kind of a partnership. And uh, so he will succeed me. My birthday is April 12th, so soon Happy after... Happy early birthday. Oh, thank you very much. Soon after that, I anticipate that they will simply announce in Rome that... Uh, Archbishop Coyne is now the Archbishop of Hartford. Christopher Coyne, who we actually had on the program last time I worked yes, for Eric. Yes, I remember, yeah. A wonderful man from, from the Vermont area. Right. Um, so you are in your final days then at this point. Yes, certainly my final month, I yeah. think. Uh, so, but it's been, I've been very blessed to be here, and obviously all of us have our challenges and struggles. Life is not always yeah. uh, easy, but uh, with God's help, I think we've done good things, and I'm grateful to the many, many people who have helped me in my work, and, uh, the, and the Catholic people and many other people of goodwill. Well, we don't have much time, but what would your uh, advice be for the incoming Archbishop Christopher Coyne and, and to the people in the Archdiocese of Hartford? Well, to Archbishop Coyne, I would simply uh, encourage him, and I, I don't need to, I know he already knows this, to, to persevere. Uh, you know, I love that line in the uh, scriptures, to, you have to run the race with your eyes fixed on Jesus. That's what the letter to the Hebrews says, run the race with your eyes fixed on Jesus. And I know he knows how to do that and he will. As far as people in general, the advice is the same. Yeah. We all have to do it in our own way. Well, Archbishop Blair, thank you very much for joining us this morning and for your years of service, and happy Easter. Well, thank you. It's very kind of you. I appreciate it. And happy early birthday again. <laughs> thank you, and, and happy retirement. Easter. You have a lot going on. You need to take a break after Well, all things this. are a little hectic right now, <laughs> but uh, they'll, they'll ease off soon enough. Thank you very much.